All right, welcome back, guys. Today I'm taking a look at a product here, which I don't normally do. Uh, this is something I picked up after having all kinds of issues with RGB on uh, my wife's computer there. Now we'll take a look at that in a little bit. And uh, what this is, uh, this is a product called Z-Sync by Zalman. And Zalman, uh, I didn't even know Zalman was really around anymore. Uh, Zalman was big in the uh, early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. They made a lot of coolers for aftermarket coolers for uh, GPUs and CPUs, and uh, they had some pretty cool ones, and some, uh, I mean, they had some excellent, outstanding ones for GPUs, and, uh, yeah, I guess they're getting into the RGB thing now, um, but this is a RGB controller, and I picked out this one specifically um, after looking at a lot of different ones, and we'll take a look at it here, and I can show you why. First off, let's get it unboxed here and see everything that comes with it. And a little instruction booklet. All right, so here is the controller, and right away I see something about it that I really like. This has a SATA power connector, which is very cool. A lot of these that you see anymore have a, they still have a Molex connector. And, uh, you know, it's like 2007 call and they want their connector back. This has eight adjustable RGB outputs on it for 5, five volt RGB. And uh, there's a micro USB connector here. And what the hell is this? A three way PWM splitter. I'm not sure why that's in there, but we're not going to be using that. Uh, but this cable right here has got a USB 2.0 header on it because the motherboard that's in my wife she's got a b450 from msi and uh, it does not have a 5 volt adjustable rgb header for a controller the controller that came with it her fans are uh, ryzen tech fans uh, she had the iris 120s and the controller took a shit on those so i did try to come up with something else for a controller for them and uh, it didn't work and i'll show you why um not no fault of, the, of what I used it was just not capable of doing what I needed it to do um, so the only other alternative that I found that has USB control for your RGB is uh, Cooler Master Cooler Master has a product as well um, but I figured I would give this one a shot since it was about half the price and uh, I know Zalman made uh, some pretty decent products before and we're going to find out how decent this thing actually is if it's decent at all so let me go get her computer in here. We'll get it set up and start getting this thing installed. All right, so this is my wife's PC. This is her uh, little Ryzen Tech case, um, mini ITX case. Pretty cool. She loves the case, actually. And you can see the fans here. There's two fans up here and one here uh, that are all RGB. And, of course, the RAM. She's got that, uh, I can't remember what the hell RAM that was in her deal. Uh, RGB RAM and it doesn't sync with fucking anything so we're hoping to fix that today we get these glass panels off of here and what's that and since I have the panels off once I get the RGB situated I'll be able to you know clean the dust out of her I haven't dusted her computer in quite a while and it's definitely do I can see quite a bit of build up here of course this is about six months of not being dusted and it actually looks pretty good for six months considering mine looks like this after about three weeks now where we live we've got a factory about two blocks one direction and if you go down the road a little further from there there's a cement plant which uh the cement plant is where we get all of our dust from i think um it's bad it gets really really bad um what i gotta do now is i have to take off i have to unscrew this front panel here and there's two screws on the top and then uh there's Two underneath here and this front panel will pop off and then we'll take a close look at what i got going on all right i feel like this is going to take a little bit of time to explain what's going on here um let me unstick this and uh this board right here is actually a, a controller from i had a broken uh, amd wraith prism fan and um uh, this is the controller for it and the output on here this is where the, the ring around the fan hooked to this and you can do all kinds of like cool fancy shit with it and it'll still power one LED strip it'll power one fan but you see I've got it into a splitter here and it splits into all three fans and it just doesn't have the oomph 
to uh, power all three fans so the lights don't come on on the fans when you've got all three of them plugged into here and um, one of these this one right here is the connector that goes to the USB 2.0 and this is a, a cooler master design uh, this still works here um, you can change the colors on that and you can do all kinds of fancy stuff with the colors on on a single fan if you have a single fan plugged in but that's not what we have here so we're gonna go through and we're gonna disconnect this entire setup here because we don't need any of this and this gets power also from SATA and I wonder if I should just pull this panel here off um, I've got everything so everything's all zip tied really nice here um, I can always re-zip tie it I suppose I'm just trying to figure out what is where Okay, so this one is my USB. So yeah, I got a I got a bunch of zip ties I got to take off here, and I wish I had more light. Let me see if I can get some light on here. All right, I hope that's a little bit better as far as light. I can actually see a little bit better. So that's not a total loss. Uh, yeah, I zip tied the hell out of this. This one of those cases where you need to really. Um, really have all your wires secured well because if you don't something's getting into a fan yeah i mean there's so close everything is so close to the fans here uh you got to really really be careful of that and here's the connectors that i actually made i don't know how well you can see that uh these were four pin connectors and the data out pins i just took and uh, i depinned everything from the the clip and i just hooked them to the uh the male to male adapters and the fourth pin the data out pin is just up underneath the heat shrink up there so yeah i can just unhook this and i'll have my three pin connector there uh if i even need that i'm not sure yeah all right that's what i'll have to do all right so i gotta try to figure out where everything is here by slowly tugging on my wires well, everything so I can see it all all right so it looks like I've got all the fans are disconnected and here's that uh, four-way ARGB splitter so I can save that for something else because I'm not going to need that here anymore so I got to find all of my all of my um, ends though and I also got to figure out where do I want to put the um, controller because it's going it's not magnetic it's got sticky tabs on it it is nice and small I mean I could probably I could, well see the hard part is I bet you I could mount it right to the SSD for now and the cover would still work on it um, yeah, let me just figure out where all my cables are first. It almost seems like it would actually be better in here, though, if I can stick it here behind all of this, because this one that goes to the CPU cooler is not going to be long enough to reach out there, and I don't want to use one extender. Alright, so I've done a bit of dinking around with this thing. You see I got all the fans going. Um, the lights anyways, the power plug for the fans themselves ain't plugged in. I have the fans out because it's just much easier. I had to uh, I had to change the ends on them. You know, I just hacked up the RGB splitter that I had and uh, got them spliced on there. And uh, that's going to work a lot better. Um, you can see I've got the USB connected to here. And this, this goes to a USB header on the motherboard. And then the power that just goes to SATA. So now I'm going to go through, I'm going to get everything cleaned out. i got to clean the fans, i got to clean the inside of the case really good. And uh, then i got to do some 
a whole lot of cable management. I got to mount the controller and uh, get a bunch of cable management done. Then we'll come back and check it out. All right. So these are the two LED strips that were in that Antec case in the front of it. And uh, they're actually not even flexible. They're on a, on a uh, stiff board, which is probably for the better because that way you don't have to worry about them flopping around in there. Uh, just got to put a little a little bit of adhesive tape on them. I mean, they're still pretty sticky on the back, but a little spot of adhesive tape. And uh, they'll stick pretty much anywhere you want. So I'm thinking somewhere where it's, you're not going to actually see the light. There's a nice channel. I don't know how well you can see it on here, but right here, there's a nice channel that you can stick one in and uh, illuminate, you know, both sides or uh, put them both here to illuminate this side or something. I don't know. I'll have to play around with it and see. But, yep, she likes RGB, so we're going to give her some RGB in here. But I finally got everything in and wired up. Uh, just It's just set to rainbow right now because I haven't got the software installed. But you can see I do have one of the LED strips down here on the bottom because uh, the RGB was just focused mainly on the top and on the CPU before. So now I've got a strip on the bottom on this side. And if I spin this around and we look at the front, you can see I did end up mounting the controller there. Uh, just because there's some little flex in these cables. Uh, these cables right here are ideal, but uh, these right here are a little thicker. And uh, I could not get them to work no matter what I did. Um, putting it in here, there was just no room. Uh, cables were either hitting here or I had to wedge them underneath and there was no room on the other side. So this was the only place that I could really put this is case it's so limited on room. And if we take a look at this side, you can see I have the RGB strip on the bottom on this side as well. There's a lot of cables in here. Thank God this is a modular uh, power supply and that this has a SATA connector because I only need to run the one SATA power that goes to here and it also uh, goes to the SSD. Um, but you can see I've got a uh, one to four pin splitter for the PWM fans and I've got all this RGB cable coming through here. There's a lot of fucking cable in this little case, so um, making it all fit is is a bit of a task, especially you've got no room at the top here. Um, you can see I've got everything trying to come through the middle, but I do have some cables that get close to the fan and the PCI Express extender cable, you can see it gets extremely close to that fan as well. And you can't really put much sharper of a bend in there. So, yeah, everything's packed in here. So now it's time to get the rest of the clean up, get the glass panels on, and, and uh, get her back out there for her. So we'll check out the Zalman software after that as well. All right, everything was going nice. Everything was, you know, on rainbow mode automatically. And everything was going good until I installed their fucking software. And I don't know what the deal is with this shit, but um, it worked good for about a minute. And then... Uh, you know, everything, you can see, like, the lights have stopped moving. And uh, now I can't really do anything with this. It's, this just keeps freezing up. The only thing I can do is basically just uh, kill it. And restart it. It won't. It, it won't work at all without restarting the computer. It's just going to keep locking up. And I may be able to get it to go again. I'm not sure. But, yeah, this is where we're stuck at now. So, uh, the controller is nice. Nice as USB controlled. But what good is it if the software don't fucking work? And as you see, it's still stuck. Nothing's moving. The only thing that's working is what's not controlled by it. The uh, RAM which nothing really controls the RAM. That's always stuck on rainbow mode. All right, so here we are. Let's let Windows load up again. And let's try this again. All right, so here's the software you get. Uh, for some reason, they want to give you, you know, all the options to see your system temperatures and shit. Not sure why that's relevant here. Um, and an option. After it freezes, this right here just says software version 0.0.1 or 1.0.0. Either way, it doesn't tell you the software version that you have. It's all fucked. It's pretty fucking confusing. This one right here, I think, is where I've got the fans on. So if I do that, if I do color shift, random color, click apply. All right, now nothing's changed.
if I do 20 LEDs, I think there's a little more than 20 LEDs in these fans. These fans got a lot of LEDs and you can't really see them. I can't get a good a good shot of the the RGB on here with this camera because it washes everything out. But uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck to, to do with this shit. I mean, even this here, you know, I, I'll just select all four because I'm not sure which one is what. If I could do, let's change that to something like, uh, I don't know, like visor. Nothing fucking changed. So the only way I can get anything to work is if I go through, if I completely uninstall this, reinstall it, uh, the lights will start going in rainbow color again. And yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck the deal is. This software sucks ass. There's obviously there's, this is only the, the second version of it. And unfortunately, uh, I try to, I have this open RGB. This is what I use on my computer and, uh, it works great for the things that it actually uh, will detect, but it will not detect the Zalman controller. Unfortunately, I would see it. now here I can control the Ram with this, like, uh, let's see, we got that Ram selected and set the rainbow. If I go and do like, let's do chase fade, a random flicker. There we go. Spectrum cycle. Let's just put them both on spectrum cycle. And I don't know if you can really see what it's doing, but anyways, this open RGB works great. I just wish that uh, that under devices that Zalman controller would show up because this would be this would be the only way to really use that thing effectively. I think this fucking Zalman software is. I don't know what the deal is with it, but it's fucking broken. So the fucked up thing is I did find a way to actually get it back to uh, work on a, at least the last settings that were that actually worked on it. I had had these uh, uh, basically set to just rotate through rainbow. The only problem is I didn't have enough LEDs selected. So you can see not all the LEDs are lighting up. Um, but the uh, bar that's on uh, Chase, I think it was Chase or something, a visor. Uh, that was set to visor, uh, which is one of the settings on there. And if you... Uh, just either the computer crashes or obviously this one ain't going to crash. If you just uh, force it to shut down with the power button, then when you turn it back on, it'll actually reset everything. And this will actually kick in and start working. And I'm afraid uh, I just uninstalled the software too. I'm afraid if I reinstall it, I won't be able to uh, control anything on it again. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe this will get added into OpenRGB in the future, but uh, for now it's not. So, um, yeah, I mean, at least she's got all her lights on now. And uh, she got a couple LED strips that are doing some cool shit. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, I guess you guys get what you pay for. I mean, if, if I had bought the Cooler Master one and paid more for it, it probably would have been more functional than this. Uh, so, yeah, definitely don't recommend this fucking Zalman Z-Sync shit to anybody. It's pretty much garbage. Just when I thought I was done, have another issue. The uh, fans were running kind of intermittent. And I think it's because of this fucking PWM splitter cable here. This is a four in one splitter. And if I would, uh, the way this was plugged in, I mean, you had to have a sharp bend on this right here. And if I had kind of moved the bend a little bit, the fans would kick on. As soon as I let go of it, they would shut off again. So I think one of the wires in there is probably broken. So one good thing that came out at Zalman purchases, I've got this three-way PWM splitter and uh, the motherboard in here uh, it only has one system fan header on it, so I, and I've got three system fans in there, so uh, this will actually work out perfect. I'll have to get this installed in there. And then I could probably, at that point, get it buttoned up for it. I don't know. We'll fucking see. All right, we're good to go. I've got everything back together. The fans are working now. Uh, that's a shame. These things are a bitch when something goes wrong. I mean, there's a lot that you have to uh, deal with to be able to fix it. And uh, I've started this at 8 o'clock in the morning, and it is now... 12 uh about 12:10. so i've been working on this for over four hours but i think i finally got it so all i gotta do is put the glass panels back on and uh call it good and she'll be happy when she gets home because she's got her rgb back yeah baby all right any takeaways from this would be uh rgb sucks nothing there's no fucking standardization in it so i think that's the biggest issue is it 
no standardization, nothing's unified, everything is fucking different, proprietary, and all that other bullshit. Uh, it'd be nice if it was, you know, pretty much standardized, at least for the controller part of it, and connectors and all that seem to be getting better. Um, and the other thing is this, this thing fucking sucks, this is that Zalman Z-Sync. Fuck this thing, man. If you want a headache with your RGB, your computer locking up and the software not working, uh, yeah, get that. Um, but if you want something that works, get something better and cross your fingers and hope that that works. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, this thing right here is a piece of shit. Alright, I uh, hope you guys got a good laugh at me on this one. I will talk to you guys later.